Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue the Bitcoin wallet series and we're going to look at Sparrow today. Once that's done, we're going to rank Sparrow on the Bitcoin wallet leaderboard and see how it compares to the others. To get Sparrow wallet, go to sparrowwallet.com and click on download. Sparrow wallet is available for Mac OS, Windows and Linux. Of note, there is no mobile version such as for Android or iPhone. We're going to download the Windows installer version. When I attempt to run the installer on my machine, I get this Windows security protection warning. I have to go more info and then click run anyway. The installer then carries on and commences running. Sparrow then gives us a notice saying it can run offline or online and what the screen will look like. Sparrow then tells you about connecting to public servers and also about connecting to your own server. It also lets you know that you can connect to your own Bitcoin Core node. Then finally, you get to a screen that lets you configure your own server. Now we can configure which server we wish to use, a public server, a Bitcoin Core server, or a private Electrum server. In this case, we're just going to use a public server. There's several options available here. We'll just use the Blockstream one. On the General tab, there's a few other options, which currency we wish to use, and a whole lot of options that we can turn on or off. And lastly, down the bottom, we can create a new wallet. We'll call this wallet Test. We get given the option to create a single signature or a multi-sig wallet, and we can also choose the script type. Native Segwit is probably the safest one at this point in time. Let's have a look at some of the options down here below. So we can use a hardware wallet, an air-gapped wallet. Uh, we can import a wallet. Let's have a quick look at that. So it supports BIP39 import and also import Electrum, and it also supports BIP32 master private keys. There also appears to be an option down here for creating a watch-only wallet. You might use that if you had a hardware wallet but you still want to be able to see transactions come in without having to plug the hardware in all the time. We're going to choose the option to create a new software wallet and we'll base it on 39. I'm going to ask it to generate me 24. In fact, I might just drop down to a 12 word one to make it easier for this demonstration. And I'm going to ask it to generate 12 private keys. Now this is a complete throwaway wallet and the private seed phrases. If anyone gets hold of these, they can spend your Bitcoin or steal it. So you must make sure to back these up and not store them anywhere they could easily be gotten down. So make sure you write these down. Next step is to confirm the backup. Once you've confirmed that you've backed up and typed in the seed phrases again, you click on create key store and then import key store. And finally, oh, well, let's look under advanced options. Okay, we won't be putting any of that stuff in. All right, and finally we click apply. We'll put no password in this case, but I think it would be a good practice if you normally did. I like to test new wallets using test Bitcoin and Sparrow makes this particularly easy. Under the tools menu, you can simply tell it to reboot using test net instead of the Bitcoin's main net. It then walks us through the wallet setup process. I won't go through this again since we just covered it. Note that a wallet address on test net is not the same as a wallet address on main net. Do not confuse test net and main net addresses if you're going to be transferring Bitcoin. Once you've created your test net wallet, you can easily flick back to main net through the tools menu again. Let's receive some test Bitcoin to see how everything goes. We click on receive. Sparrow automatically generates a receiving address for us. We can put a label. We're going to be using CoinForcer to get some test. I'll put that in for my label so I know where it came from. I'm not quite sure what these are but they look quite advanced and obviously generates a QR code so if you're just scanning between apps just scan the QR code. All right so I'm going to copy this address and now we'll go over the CoinForcer.eu website. Note that this website for me at least doesn't work in Google Chrome so I'm currently using Edge. So you want to use the Bitcoin test net and then put in your receiving address from just before and click get bitcoins. Note it's considered good manners that when you receive test Bitcoin on the test net that you return it to where you got it from. So in this case here we've been given this wallet address and I'll take a copy of that and I'll return it to there when I'm finished. Also note on test net that sometimes the performance of the network can be variable. Sometimes it'll be quick, sometimes you might be waiting half an hour so if it doesn't turn up very quickly just be patient. While we're waiting for the funds to turn up let's look at some of the other options. I see down here there's an option you click on to get the next address so address rotation is easy and down here there is an online offline button. Let's take a look under the file menu. So I see you can create new wallets, open existing wallets, you can open a specific transaction. Let's have a look under import wallet. So this makes it very easy to come from other wallets because there's so many other wallets supported. Let's have a look at exporting wallet and also you can export it in lots of different formats. So wallet portability is excellent with Sparrow. Also under file is preferences. This is the same things we got when we were setting up the wallet to begin with. And lastly, we've got delete wallet, close tab and quit. Right, let's have a look under view. Bitcoin unit lets you choose whether you want to see it in BTC or SATs or automatically select it. Unit format, so do you want it comma format or dot format, kind of French format or international. Theme, we can select light or dark. Open wallet, new windows. 
when you open up more windows here's one and you get the other wallets right beside it hide empty used addresses i presume there's no transactions doesn't hide them use hd camera resolution i presume that's for scanning qr codes and most of the other options here are fairly self-explanatory let's take a look under tools i'm not completely sure for this one sign verify message so i assume this is either used for multi-sig when you've got other parties and you need more than one person to sign or if you're using a cold wallet so you sign it and then uh, send it back again send many will be to do with paying multiple people at the same time so rather than having multiple transactions you can have just one and save on the transaction fee I'm not sure about sweep private key find mix partner will be for coin join coin join is a privacy feature and it mixes your transaction in with other people's and makes it harder to see where a BTC originated from and went to for a Pacific flow paying them is also related to coin join and is a way to identify other parties easily without actually showing people prevent computer sleeping so it doesn't go into sleep mode and we've already done this one restart into main net and help is obviously how to use Sparrow wallet now that a little bit of time has passed if I go to transactions I can see my test Bitcoin has arrived I also notice in transaction view that you can have these little magnifying glasses you can click on and it opens up a tab of more information about it and it also has this little button here which you can click on which lets you spend that particular UXTO over in the send tab you got your normal kind of option where you can put in a pay to address you can scan a QR code you can also add multiple payers here to add extra people into the transaction in the drop down box you can choose to send it to your own wallet a mixer code for pay in I presume this is more for on a phone but if your computer's got an NFC card you could also uh, pair it with another device for payment too in our case we're going to send some money back to CoinForcer one weakness I found in this area is there doesn't seem to be any way to create an address book of funds to send money to so you can't just like create an address book entry called CoinForcer and save it for reusing again you can put in and label I will call this coin force it for this transaction and then you can send out fill out the amount to send I'm going to send a thousand sets back to coin force it you can also select to send it specify the amount in BTC next you've got fee assistance options so you can select how quickly you'd want the transaction to be sent so a block is every 10 minutes so if you said I was prepared to have it sent within three blocks then it's calculating that that would cost 1.01 sats per virtual byte at the moment or a total fee of 144 sats it also has a nice visualization tool although it's not working very well on testnet at the moment because there's not many transactions happening but normally you could have a look at the graph of the mempool versus target blocks you can also override the fee by simply just typing in an amount i'm going to use a ridiculously low fee of one sat per virtual block so i want to try out fee boost options after this then it has this very nice visualization tool so it shows originally the money i'm spending came from uh, coin force it and it's being split into three parts there's the a thousand dollars i'm sending to coin force it there's the remaining of the unspent transaction output which will go back into my wallet and then the fee we're paying to the Bitcoin network down the bottom here you have an option to optimize for either efficiency or privacy one problem I've been having regularly with Sparrow is the user interface keeps locking up and it's just done it again I've probably had this happen about 20 times since I've started testing it none of the buttons work anymore you can't click on anything the only thing I've found you can do is to quit Sparrow and start it again so I'll just do that and reload up this transaction just for your interest I'm using Sparrow one Point seven point seven. so hopefully they'll fix up those GUI bugs in some time in the future. Right, I've just reloaded this transaction. The minimum fee it will suggest for one block is 144 sats. If I try to do anything less than that, it grays out the transaction button. So that must be the minimum it'll accept. So I'll go 144 sats and go create transaction. Once again, it gives me this nice view showing the coins being used, consumed, and how they're being split out. I will, oh, what's under details over here? It shows some extra information, which I'm not really too sure about, but you get some extra detail there we'll finalize the transaction for sign you can save and load the transaction I'm assuming that's for either completely cold wallets where you've got another piece offline or if you're doing multi-sig I'm not quite sure why we'd use scan maybe this is for transferring for multi-sig or for pure cold wallets right once we're happy with the transaction we'll sign it we have another option to view the transaction this is obviously in its very raw form and then we can broadcast it which sends it to the network back in transaction view we can see we have an unconfirmed transaction if we right click on our unconfirmed transaction we get a few choices we can view it which gives us the nice detailed view again we can use replace by fee to make it go through faster we have the option to cancel it and we can also use child pays for parent this is probably one of the nicest implementations I've seen for free fee control let's simply use the uh, replace by fee mechanism let's bump the fee we'll double it to 288 sets to make it happen faster when I 
type the fee in. For some reason, the grays out create transactions. If I try and use the slider here, it's not really very clear to me how I can do manual fee control. Let's try typing in an absurd fee. 1000, no, 100, no, 144. Keeps just graying out the option here, so I'll just use the slider bar. So I'll drag it all the way to the left to so say I want this to happen through in one block. And I get the sats for here, so I'll tell it to create the transaction. I'll finalize it for signing and sign it and broadcast it. Something went wrong with broadcasting the transaction. I'm not quite too sure what, but let's just carry on. Let's have let's try it using child pays for fee instead to increase the fee. So I've got it slid all the way across to happen in one block. It's shows it's going to add in a mixed partner. Let's try, oh, that is quite expensive. Let's see if we can just type in a hundred, a thousand sats, which is 30 cents, create the transaction, sign it, broadcast it again. This one seems a bit happier. We can see the unconfirmed parents of this mechanism is all kicked in. I'm not quite sure why increased fee using replace by fee didn't work. Maybe it's some misunderstanding I've got. It could also be related to the current state of test net. You got to remember this is a test network rather than the production main net. Let's have a go at looking at coin join where we mix transactions with other people so for this we go over to uxtos we select one of our existing unspent transaction outputs and we say mix selected mixing is done using a service provided by whirlpool whirlpool charge a fee for this as well and it talks about what's going to happen here it tells us that it's going to be creating three wallets pre-mix post mix and bad bank if you happen to have a code you can enter it here from whirlpool for fee reduction and pools are batched based on their size Guys, we're going to be doing a fairly small one, so we'll choose the smaller pool of 100,000 sats, and let's preview the premix. Here we can see the details of the deposit going in. Fund originally came from Coin Faucet, and the transaction a fee deducted for World Pool. Any leftover change will go here, and we're getting three premixes and a bunch of other ones here, and then the Bitcoin network fee. There is a premix tab over here, nothing much here. Postmix and the bad bank. We'll head back to deposit and. Let's broadcast our premix transaction. Now the process has started. We have we go head over to our prefix premix tab. Sorry, we can see a whole lot of stuff in here. Post mix, nothing has popped out yet, and nothing in bad. Oh, let's check, and we got some change left over. All right, let's check and wait for the transactions to be processed. We can see the mixing starting to occur with this little bar graph. It's now been several hours since I started the process, and what should be happening is this mixes column should be going up one, two, three, four, and so on. Now to do a mix you need at least four people and it looks like there's not four people available on testnet trying to do a coin join at the moment so i don't think this process is going to complete what i should see happening is the mixing occurring and then in post mix i should be seeing the post mix uxtos happening also note for the coin join mixing process to work you have to leave sparrow running i had several cases again with the user interface locked up on me and i had to stop and restart it and so i don't know if maybe that affected it as well time to score sparrow on the bitcoin wallet leaderboard First of all, let's start cross-platform support. So it has a Windows, Linux, and Mac client, but it, there are no Android or iPhone versions. So it scores six out of 10 for cross-platform support. When it comes to network support, it can run against its own custom node. It supports testnet, but it doesn't support lightning. The configuration of the nodes is quite good and well-guided, so I'm gonna awarded a bonus point there. So it earns a total of seven points out of 10 for network support. Under security, it's a self-custody wallet. It is only BTC. It's supports both hot wallets and cold wallets such as hardware wallets it does support address rotation it's open source it does support coin join and multi-sig the interface for configuring these i thought was quite good so i'm going to award it a bonus point here the only thing that's a little bit in trepidation is that i did have a lot of software stability problems with the software locking up i'm gonna try and ignore that for the moment and assuming that that was just related to the version i'm running wallet portability so it can import bit 39 addresses as export them and it can also private key import. I'm going to award it a bonus point because it had extensive uh, options for both exporting and importing from other wallets so you won't be trapped into using the software if you decided you want to change later on. And lastly fee control. It did seem to provide ability to manually specify the fee control although when I was trying this out it didn't seem to work very well in the interface. I'm going to put that down to a bug. It did offer guided features so you could say I want a fee to go through in two, uh, two blocks. It, it does support replace by fee although when I tried it it uh, crashed and brought up an error for me and it does support child pays for peer
appearance as well. I'm going to provisionally give it a bonus point as well. The GUI was quite good, but once again, I had a lot of problems with apparent bugs and crashes and lockups. I'm going to just hope that this is related to just the particular version I'm running. If all of these bugs are normal for Sparrow, then I'd, I'd have to knock off several points in different areas. So if we average all of those out, Sparrow scores 8 out of 10. Once again, I'm basing that provisionally on other people not having the crashing and lockups that I experienced. I've not used Sparrow before, so I don't know whether that's normal. If that turns out to be normal for Sparrow, then you'd have to take several points off. If you're trying to decide between Electrum and Sparrow, then probably Lightning Support would be one of the major decisions since only Electrum had that. If you decided you wanted Lightning Support, then go Electrum. Otherwise, Sparrow was better in several other areas, particularly wallet portability and the range of security options that it provided. Are you a Sparrow wallet user? I'd love to know. Could you let me know in the comments below what version you're using and have you found it stable or did you have problems like me where it kept locking up or crashing or not responding? I'm also going to leave some other videos around my head that you might find of interest and thanks for watching.